greatest bunch of kids I ever saw. Uh, yeah. That's a fine thing Thad's doing here, building these kids up, giving them the chance that their dads would have wanted them to have. But it's about to tear me down. I had to take them on a three-mile hike yesterday, and my corns are worn to a frazzle. Get out of here. How do they look? Well, Thad, pretty well, but they're might older than the rest. Well, they should be. They are. Oh, you get in there. <laughs> here. All right, boys. Oh, Lord, for what we are about to receive, we offer our humble thanks. What's all the excitement? I've got an important message from Thad's attorney. It's about his nephew. Why, he was reported missing in action. That's been over three years ago. He was the last of Cameron's. I've got a hunch this says he's still alive. Boy, will Thad be happy. But we better break it to him gently. You know he's getting pretty old. And make us live better lives. Amen. Amen. Uh, dig in. Oh, uh, Thad. Yeah? Could we see you now? Uh, take your time, boys. That's seconds for everybody. I'll be right back. Better get some of that chow before it's... Man, wait a minute now. No, I'm, I'm getting too old to right play the game. We uh, think this is important. Huh? To, uh, Thad Cameron. Your nephew, Frank Cameron, is alive and well. Your attorney said to drop in at the office as soon as you could. Do you know what this means? It means the name of Cameron isn't going to die out with me. There's another to carry on. I haven't seen him since his mother and I disagreed. That was 20 years ago. But I'll make it up for the boy. Too bad his mother couldn't have lived to see this. Well, he can come right here and run the camp. He'll know what to do with boys that have lost their dads. Hey, Frank's no, alive. No, 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 come here. Take it easy. Take it easy. God blame it. Take it easy. Why, well, I feel 30 years younger. <laughs> I, I'm going right now to see my attorney. Well, wait, my uh, horse. He's right outside. Uh, yeah, I'll take your horse and no, no, save no. me time. Hey, Waters, where are you? Don't slam that door. You make my cake fall. Well, congratulations, Thad. You got my message, I see. Isn't it wonderful, Harry? I can hardly wait to see that boy. Where is he? Uh, when will he get here? Oh, he'll be here pretty soon. Now, you just sit down. That's the greatest news I've heard in 20 years. When you received word from the War Department saying that Frank was missing in action, I got busy on the case right away. I knew he was the last of your family. I found that because of shock, he was suffering from amnesia. But he's all right now. Gosh, Harry, it sure pays to have a good lawyer for a friend. <laughs> You're an old flatterer, and you'll never change. Oh, um, Frank will need some money for expenses and train fare to get here. Well, give him anything he needs. I gotta be running along. I've got lots to do. By the way, do you want any changes made in your will? You've left everything to the camp, you know. The will? Yeah. I think we'd better change it. i tell you what you do. You give half of the estate to Frank, and the other half to the kids. There's plenty for everybody. Yes, plenty. Well, if you've just signed this blank form right here, I'll take care of the details. I hate details. I'll get to get to town and do a lot of shopping. Goodbye, Harry. And uh, thanks for everything.
Lay down, you killers. Hey, what's happened to the other dog? There's only three. been hit by one of Thad's bullets and crawled off somewhere to die. Come on, we gotta get out of here. That's the way you want it, eh? Come on, get out of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa take it easy, whoa. Take it easy, whoa. Oh. Take it easy, whoa. Oh. Whoa, whoa, take it easy, whoa. your horse. Yeah, what'd you do to him? Me do to him? He was drinking out of my trough. How do I know what kind of disease he's got? Don't worry, mister. It won't happen again. Besides, he gargles every morning. Oh, wise guy, huh? Sir, I mean, Marshal. Oh, well, don't let this badge bother you. It'll be a pleasure to take it no, off. No, no, I, I wouldn't think of it. I got a lot of respect for you fellas. Best bunch of men in the country, I say. We got to be careful. We've been having a lot of trouble around here with stray horses infecting the drinking water. Can't be too careful. I run the best stable in town. Nice horse you got here. And I say he's all right. Anytime you want to bring him in, I'll take care of him for you. Thanks, I'll take a rain check on it. Dr. Bullfinch, you're still in the same place? Sure, right down the street a little ways. Thanks. Come on, Trigger. Yes, I'll have the doctor stop by. All right. Trouble? Yes, at Mrs. O'Toole's. I guess we'd better get going. What's the matter? Her tomcat got out again. <laughs> I can diagnose that. Love, love, love. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes a new patient. Maybe it's that Mr. Brown. Must be. I've never seen him before. How do you do? Well, hello. I'm looking for Dr. Bullfincher. Yes, I know. He'll be with you in a moment, Mr. Brown. Oh, wait a minute. Now, don't be nervous. He's a very competent doctor. He never operates without first making a thorough diagnosis. May well, I take your hand? Stay here. Put your feet up right here. There. Now, you just lie quietly there. We'll see if we just can't get your blood pressure down for you, Mr. Brown. Didn't I ask you to lie there quietly? Well, what? There. Now, nobody's going to hurt you. Now, be very quiet. I don't know that. It's very warm out. We'll see if this can cool you off a little bit. There until the doctor comes. I'll be right back. Your patient's ready, doctor. I'll be right in. You didn't tell me it was a U.S. Marshal. A U.S. Marshal? Uh-huh. And a cute one, too. But a little difficult to quiet down. Cute? Uh-huh. Did you get him quieted down? Oh, yes, doctor. You didn't happen to notice whether he was wearing badge number 42 or not, did you? Well, could be. I think I know who this patient is. Mr. Brown. Temperature is 126. 
Anybody that hot should be cooled off. Definitely. Penny, I'm sorry. Roy, you shouldn't have done it. You know how sensitive I am. Oh, are you, Doctor? <laughs> Ouch! Uh, Penny, this is Roy Rogers. Uh, Hi. <laughs> it was your joke, Cookie, so you clean it up. <laughs> See what you call now. What you doing down here anyway? Vacation? I wish it was a vacation, but it's not. I'm checking into old Pad's death. Well, there's nothing much to check about that. I signed the death certificate myself. Same pack of wolves killed him, been killing all the livestock around here lately. They told me it was wolves. The insurance companies paid the stockmen off heavy for their losses. I've seen the reports. The federal game wardens were here. Yes, and every time they got close to their trail, your wolves disappeared into thin air. Oh, you know how smart wolves are. I know how smart dogs are, too. Dogs? What do you mean, dogs? I mean that when a wolf kills a man, he does it because he's hungry. Your own report stated that old Pad bled to death. Then you think dogs did it? Definitely. No, Roy, no. I hear they found old Pad's nephew after all this time. Yeah, Pad was a wonderful man. It's too bad he didn't live to meet the boy. Pioneers are doing a swell job running the place till he gets here. Hell, I haven't seen the guys in a long time. I think as soon as I get unpacked, I'll take a run up there. Good, I'm going out that way and they could call on Hattie Waters. When I get through, I'll join you. Well, see ya. Oh, Roy! <laughs> <laughs> Your two ladies gone. I had to change, remember? <laughs> love, love, love. <laughs> to me. So let me ride along the Texas trail. Out on the plains, there's plenty to see, plenty to see. All nature sings a song along the trail. I want to hear the coyote baby howling to his mate who's waiting. In the chill of the night out on the prairie, still is music to a cowboy's ear. The moon above will light up the way, light up the way for everyone who loves the Texas Howdy, Roy. Hi, Cookie. Hi, oh, Penny. Hi. See, so you found the boys. How are you, Bob? I'm fine, Cookie. Miss Hattie? Hattie wanted to talk to you fellas. Oh, uh, Miss Waters, this is Mr. Rogers. How do you do? Hattie's attorney for Thad's estate. Oh? I've been hearing a lot of nice things about you. Thanks. Hello, Bob. I'm glad to see you're all here because I have something very important to discuss with you. Thad's will has just been opened, and according to his wishes, the entire estate goes to his nephew, Frank Cameron. That doesn't sound like Thad. Surely he'd left a part of the estate to the kids. When do you expect this nephew? Well, I... Oh, oh Doctor. Oh. Here you are, Hattie. Oh, thank you. Doctor, I'm worried. The excitement has been too much for her. Well, she'll be all right. Get her on home. I want to stay here and take a look at the kids. See you later, Roy. Bye, boys. Bye. Bye. See you later. See you later. Cookie, Bob seemed awful surprised that Thad left all of his money to his nephew. Yeah, it was surprising. <laughs> but old Thad was sure excited when he heard about him. Oh, it'll turn out all right. 
Does she have those spells very often? No, only when she gets excited. She's got a coronary occlusion. A what? A coronary... Oh, you know, bad ticker. Oh. Get. Go on, get. What's all that for? Oh, they're just playing. They thought they saw a wolf. Said he was chasing a deer, but I didn't stick around to find out because after what happened to Thad, I don't like wolves. You see, Roy, I told you there were wolves around here. Where'd all this happen? Up on Timber Ridge. Okay, I think I'll take a ride up and look around. No, I'll go with you. I'd like to take a ride. Wolves? There's Timber Ridge up there, Roy. Split up, Cookie. You better take that draw. If that wolf was lucky enough to pull down that deer that the kid said he was chasing, he's still around here someplace. I'll meet you at the top of the ridge. Good. <laughs> What's the matter, boy? Something up there? There's one of your wolves, Cookie. That's a dog. What'd I tell you? Wait a minute, Roy. He looks mean enough to be a wolf. Easy, boy. No. Take it easy, fella. Nobody's gonna hurt you. good, are you? Here, here. Well, let me try it. I remember in psychology class, they said music would take care of a situation like that. la dee doo doo Pretty little dog. Nice boy. la da dee doo You must have been a little off key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he thinks he's gonna do it. <laughs> Take it easy now. See, nobody's gonna hurt you. Wonder why he gave up so easy. Strike's gone. Take it easy, boy. And look, Roy, he's been shot. Yeah, and the wound hasn't healed. Get my saddlebags, will you? Atta boy. Hello, boy. 
that's a pretty bad wound. The bullet's still in there. Bet you've had a lot of pain, haven't you, old fella? Dr. Cookie will fix you up. You want to save him, Roy? I certainly do. Don't forget that deer back on the trail. He's a killer, you know. Listen, Cookie. When you're as hungry and as starved as he is, you'll do anything for food. Well, he's no more killer than you are. He just been beaten into it. How long ago would you say it was since he was shot? Oh, about two or three weeks. Here you are, old fella. This will relax you. That's a good boy. Swallow it now. You better go back and get your surrey. That's the best way to haul him in. All right, boy. Take it easy, boy. You don't know how important you are to me. Come on, boy. That's a good start. Come on. We'll have you as good as new. Penny, go ahead and take care of the dog. Since this has come up, there's something very important I've got to take care of. All right, Roy. I'll see you in a few minutes. That's a good fella. We'll fix it. Come on, put your head down. Come on, fella. That's it. Come on there. Do you think we should muzzle him? No, Penny. I think this will take care of it. There you go, boy. This will take care of it. There, that's a good dog. We've got to think of a name for him. Looks like he's got some wolf in him. Hey, he kissed me. Oh, he does have some wolf in him. I know. We're going to call you El Lobo. <laughs> Plenty of excitement. Rogers and the doctors came into town with a missing dog. Alive? Yeah. I knew we should have gone back and looked for him. Oh, that dog had only been killed. I knew he'd do this to me. He wasn't like the others. He always hated me. Well, we'll have to get him back, that's all. Get him back? We'd better get rid of the others. Why? This was just a tough break, that's all. They'll never associate us with that dog. I planned Thad's unfortunate death for a long time. It took months to train those dogs. Why, if our wolves downstairs disappeared from this part of the country now, it might make the whole thing look suspicious. Hattie Water speaking. Yes. He has? I see. Thanks for calling. What's the matter, Hattie? Bad news? Terrible. Shock. What was it? Mr. Rogers has just called on our local insurance agent. He asked him to hold up payment on Thad's insurance policy. Hold it up? After all the trouble we've gone through to... <coughs> oh, shut up, Vic. Well... I guess we'll have to go find Mr. Rogers. Good boy. There we are. He's going to be all right. There you are. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. What'll I do with the bullet? So you better save it. Roy might want it. Hello, Hattie. I'm glad you're in, Doctor. I just ran out of medicine. I want to pick up another prescription. Fine. What to... Uh, what kind of a patient is that? It's a dog. Found him out in the woods. Just took a bullet out of him. No, folks. No, no, no. no. Water, 
before he kills somebody. Lobo, no, get back here. Lobo, what's the matter with you? Vic, no, you've no right, no! Hold it, Vic, what do you think you're doing? Lay off, will you? That killer just tried to tear Hattie to pieces. I'll be responsible for that dog. Put him in the back room, Penny. Yeah, sure, Roy, sure. Come on, Lobo. Here you are, Hattie. Thank you. I feel better now. Well, you just lay down and take a little rest. I did have quite a scare, you know. Well, that's right. Well, you just rest and I'll fill out that prescription. Thank you. Mr. Rogers, I can't understand your sudden affection for that vicious brute. He should be destroyed. I'm sorry, but I've got to see that he lives. He may tell us what happened to Thad. A dog can't talk. He might with a few lessons. And another thing, Mr. Rogers, I've just been notified that at your suggestion, the insurance on Thad's estate has been held up. That's right. Well, I have to ask you to change your mind and withdraw your complaint. I can't. Don't you realize that by depriving us of money, you're forcing us to close the boys' camp? Why, Thad would turn over in his grave if he thought those youngsters didn't have a decent home to live in. I'm sorry, Miss Waters, but my job is to preserve the law. A fine way to preserve the law. What right have you to come here and stir up mistrust and ill will, merely on unfounded suspicion? Well, after all, you haven't any real evidence, you know, Roy. Oh, it's the worst thing I ever heard of. Believe me, I have friends and they'll see you don't get away with it. I'm going to see the sheriff right now. Oh, take it easy, take it easy, Hattie. Here's your prescription. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Come on, Vic. Roy, there's a lot of truth in what she says about the boys' camp. You didn't have to do what you did. You too, Cookie. But, Roy, those kids... What'll they do? What'll become of them? Our friend, the good doctor here, has something to say to you about it. Neighbors, you know what Thad's camp has meant to this community. And now that his nephew's been found, it's more important than ever that we keep it running until he gets here to take over. Hattie has convinced me that with the stoppage of the insurance money, the place will have to close. And that means that the kids that live here, because their fathers made the supreme sacrifice, will have to be thrown back out into the streets where we found them. And I don't like it. And I'm not going to take it sitting down. And those of you that feel as I do about it will come up here and sign this petition with me. Uh-oh. I thought there must be some reason for you not being in your office. Why didn't you tell me, Cookie? You might have been able to talk this thing over. I tried to talk to you in the office, Mr. Rogers, but it didn't do any good. Ever since you've been here, you've stirred up hatred and ill feeling among us. As you've probably heard, we're all going to sign a petition asking for your recall as a meddlesome, inefficient public servant. Roy, if you'll release the insurance money, everything will be all right, honest. Tend to your own business. Folks, I'd like to see this camp stay open as much as any of you. And if it's got the clothes, I'm sorry. But I've got a job to do. Roy, I'm going to have to ask you to leave so we can carry on with the business. Not until I see that petition. Cookie? Roy! Oh. Rogers, you've done about enough. You're a disgrace to the badge you wear. I think you better leave as the doctor says. 
Don't you think so, folks? Yeah, go on. Take him out now. Take him on outside. Cookie, I... I'll back that petition 100%. I have anything to do with it. He won't be a marshal after tonight. Good. I want to be the first to sign. So come around, folks. We'll draw up a new petition. I can't figure it out. There must be some reason. There is. His badge and his temper. No, it's not that. I don't feel well, Doctor. I think I'd better have Vic take me home. Yeah, that's a good idea, Hattie. Get some rest. Aren't you going to stay for coffee? No, thank you. There'll be enough signatures on that petition, Sheriff. I'll leave it in your hands. All right, Hattie, and thanks a lot for all that you've done. Well, anything for those children upstairs. Good night. Good Come night. Come on, Vic. Everybody's invited to stay for refreshments. Well, we couldn't ask for anything nicer. I guess he's cleared out. He'd better. After the fool he made of himself in there, everybody's on our side. If he hasn't gone, Vic, we'll run him out of town. Take it easy, Hattie, remember. Ah, oh, I'm all right. He's not tied. Get around on the other side so he can't make a break. Yeah. I'll get his attention, Vic, while you grab him. So, they've made you soft, have they? I made you mean once, I can do it again. Three of your little pals are at home in the basement waiting for you. You won't bite me. Good boy, Vic. After last night, I'm surprised you'd show your face around here. Didn't your mother ever tell you not to believe anything you hear and only half of what you see? Where's Lobo? We thought he was with you. Why, no, I haven't seen him since the meeting. Where's Cookie? Out on a case. You mind if I leave him a note? If I did, I'd probably get socked on the jaw. There's paper on the desk. Thanks. Someday, Penny, you'll learn that things are not always what they seem. I'll leave this note on his desk. See that Cookie gets it, will you? Be seeing you. Represent the Citizens Protective Association. We're escorting you out of town right now. Well, wait a minute. You can't That's get away. That's what we all say. Get on that horse. Doc, sorry about that punch last night. It was all an act. Explain when I see you, Roy. P.S. If it'll make you feel any better, you can take a punch at me. That sounds just like old Roy, don't it? What's the matter with you? Well, I'm not sure, but just as Roy went out of here, Vic and some men met him at the bottom of the stairs, and he rode away with them. Vic and some men? Yes. That don't sound good to me. Come on. All right.
Rogers, you've caused the people a lot of trouble around here. There's the road out of town. We're going to see that you're headed. <laughs> to fight a little before he leaves, boys. Come on, come on. Are you quitting? That's enough, you dirty bunch of yellow dogs. If it wasn't for having to patch you up, I'd blow holes in all of you. What's the matter with you? I thought you wanted Rogers out of the way. I didn't say I wanted him whipped to death. Now throw your guns on the ground and get out of here. Here, let me take a look at you. Thanks. I got my own duck. Well, that's good enough for me. Now, if you'll take my advice, you'll stay out of town and keep right on going. For what? It was only defending ourselves. Defending yourselves? Are you in trouble? Four of you picking on an officer. You hear that, boys? He says an officer. You don't read the papers, do you?
I'm going to fix you up so you can go into town and arrest them fellas for assault on an officer of the law. I can't arrest them. Sure you can, Roy. You've got all the evidence you need. Yeah. I tell you, I can't arrest him. I'm not a marshal anymore. I lost my badge, Cookie, for hitting you. Oh, we can get that back for you, Roy. I can square that. It was all my fault. I shouldn't have... You couldn't help it. You thought you were doing the right thing. Cookie, I hit you for one reason. I wanted to lose my badge. Because I've got a job to do here. I get it. Now that you're not a marshal anymore, you figure they'll come right out in the open. They got a pretty good start today. Well, he's still gonna be around. I was doing like you told me, and Doc Bullfinger showed up on the scene and winged me. You want me to keep trying to get... Oh, the... you can forget about Rogers. Don't get trigger happy. Without a badge, he can't do much harm anyway. You'd better get that arm fixed up. Yeah. What about the money? The insurance company promises to pay off as soon as Frank Cameron arrives. Thought he got killed in Italy. He did. But we're bringing him back to life. A brand new Frank Cameron. Direct from the penitentiary. Like you shouldn't be falling down and getting yourself all dirty. Oh, no, you don't. I can dust myself off, thank you. Well, I was only trying to help. You see, I'm a stranger, and I was looking for Hattie Waters' office. Hattie Waters? Yes. Well, you won't find it by going... <whistles> it's two miles out of town. Well, how do I get there? Get a horse. Say, how about a date some night? Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. Frank. Hiya, Hattie. I haven't seen you since I stood in front of the judge and he said five years. What's the matter? They chase you out of the big town, too? Never mind about that. You took your own time about getting here. I only stopped in town for a little drink. Frank, you didn't. Oh, don't worry. I didn't tell anybody my name. And besides, it's been so long since I've had one. Remember me? Number 175-436. Oh, Vic, this is the fellow I was telling you about, Frank Dennis. Honey, you got yourself a new sucker, huh? Hi. Hi. Close the door, Vic. From now on, he's going to be Frank Cameron, our brand new nephew. Frank Cameron. Oh, I get it. That's why you didn't want me to tell anybody my name. I'm supposed to be somebody else. Exactly. One of our leading citizens was killed recently by a pack of wolves. You're his long-lost nephew come to claim his estate. Same old Hattie. But what's in it for me? Look, I had to work hard to get you out of jail and bring you here. Where's your gratitude? I should have known that you didn't get me out on kind of your big heart. All right, when do we start? That's better. Next time, do as I say and stay out of trouble. Vic will give you the lowdown on the setup here. Good. Take my bags upstairs. Sure. Go on, Vic. Go on, Vic. You are the boss. I hope you're enjoying your party. Everybody wants you to feel at home. Sure, I will. I'm uh, sorry about this afternoon, but I didn't know who you were. Oh, that's all right. We all make mistakes. I got a yarn I'd like to spin. If you don't care, I'll start right in. It's about the meanest horse I ever knew. I got on top that toughest brute that ever jumped out from a chute. With every jump, that critter tossed a shoe. I grabbed the horn, I grabbed some hair. I really grabbed most everywhere. The way he squealed and bellered was a sin. He made a jump and turned around. I made a div and hit the ground and bounced right up and started in again. He's a killer, killer, killer. He's the graveyard filler of the West. As I was saying before I quit, I grabbed the reins and I pulled the bit and rode that ornery critter like a dog. 
He looked around and said to me, why, cowboy, you just wait and see, I'll water you just like a hairy hog. The crowd applauded out with glee, the bronc, he looked again at me and said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, whoa. You made a mess of things, old kid, you blew your top, you flipped your legs, you shouldn't ought to have done it, now you're through. He's a killer, 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 he's the graveyard seller of the West. Well, I don't know, but I've been told that lightning flash and thunder rolled and a cyclone hit the seat where I was sat. They picked me up, the doctor said they had to tie me up in bed because I was going to be crazy as a bat. The moral to this story is if you ain't young and full of fish, you better keep your feet down on the ground. Don't hit the saddle of a steed that's lived for years on local weed. That is, if you still want to be around. He's a killer. He's a killer. Killer, killer. killer. He's a You know, Penny, a beautiful girl like you shouldn't be wasting her time in this neck of the woods. I'd like to show you the big city. Oh, well, I'm pretty busy with the doctor. It would be more fun if you were busy with me. Uh, oh, there's no one at the punch bowl. Now that things are sort of straightened out and Thad's nephew's here, maybe we can get this insurance policy settled. That's what we're hoping. Yeah, I was with the Fifth Army when we took the Philippines. How thrilling. Yeah, it sure was. And then we took Iwo Jima. That really was a tough one. My, you got around. Say, what about tomorrow night, huh? We can go to some nice, quiet place and relax. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm busy tomorrow night. Say, Penny, how about some punch? Oh, sure, Roy. Thanks. Oh, that's a stupid thing to do. It certainly was. All that nice punch. If I wasn't so good-natured, I'd waste a punch on you. Uh, Frank, don't be so nervous. He's sorry. Now, go get yourself dried off like a good boy. <sighs> Thanks, Roy. That was a big favor. Don't mention it. You can do me a big favor, too. Sure, Roy. Stick around tonight after the party. We're gonna have a family meeting. Sure. Oh, what a party. Yeah, even Frank enjoyed it. Frank. I can't understand how Thad could have a nephew like that. That's why I asked you all to stick around tonight. Maybe he hasn't. What do you mean, maybe he hasn't? I mean that all that stuff he told Penny about the Fifth Army wasn't true. The Fifth Army took Italy, not the Philippines. And everybody knows the Marines took Iwo Jima. Well, maybe he was just blown off for Penny. What's that got to do with Thad? Did it ever occur to any of you how conveniently this Frank showed up? The whole thing's a plot. Thad was murdered for his money. This nephew's a fake. You all know what I thought of old Thad and what I think of those boys upstairs. Well, I'm not going to stand by and see them lose their home to anybody like Frank. Cookie, you remember what you said about making them come out into the open? Yeah. Well, now's our chance. We're going to help them along. Is everybody with me? Sure. Yes, sure. Right. Good. Now, the first thing in the morning... Hi, sugar. Hi, Frank. You're right on time. I uh, hope you didn't think I was too brazen when I called you, but I, I just felt like a ride. Oh, that's all right. All the girls treat me that way. <laughs> really Western. Yep. Sure is. I think you better try the other side. Oh, sure. <clears throat> Promised me they'd stay out of sight. <laughs> mm. 
night in Paris. They both smell bad to me. This don't get the job done, nothing will. Here they come. Hello, Roy. We didn't expect to find you here. Hiya, fellas. Hello, Danny. I think we'd better go. Oh, forget about that. You're off west now, and they don't hold grudges, do they, Roy? No. Well, we're just getting ready to have a bite. How about joining us? Sure. Say, that looks good. Please sing for me. It's my favorite song. Sure. No subways, no traffic jams, no cops. No nothing, just you and me. We could have this place all to ourselves with plenty of money to spend. And maybe go on a trip once in a while. Well, I... I'd love to travel. Stick with me, baby, and we'll both go places. You know, I've been thinking... I just remembered something. I have to be running along, sweetheart. I have a very important business engagement. Uh, well, if you don't mind, I think I'd like to stay here. I want to talk to the pioneers. Oh, that's all right, sweetie. I'll pick you up in an hour. So long, fellas, and thanks. Be seeing you, Frank. Okay, pal. I hope this doesn't last much longer. I can't stand him. Did you hear what he said about an important engagement? Yes, and I think we'd better follow him to see where that important engagement is. Pat him in my hat. You fellas stick around. You see here. insurance company finally paid off. I've been trying to get in touch with you. What's this? That's your cut. Now take it and get out. Why should I take a little cut like this when it all belongs to me? What are you talking about? I'd be a sucker to leave all this. It's a beautiful ranch and a lot of money goes with it. And a cute gal. I'm gonna be a nice guy, Hattie. This is your cut. I'll take the rest, now you get out. All right, Frank, you wanted to stay? Wolves! No, Harry. Take this money into town, pay off our citizens' committee, and tell them to get away from here as fast as possible. He's heading for town. Get back to camp and tell the pioneers it looks like everything's set. They'll know what to do. You fellas did a good job. Everything turned out just the way I wanted it. But remember, you've got to stay out of town at least six months. When you come back, I'll give you the other half of your money. You know I never go back on my... All right, get their guns. Get in there. 
in there and fight. How did you get in here? Don't you ever knock? I saw Frank come in here and I wanted to talk to him. I want to talk to you, too. All right. Oh, my heart. My heart. Oh, get me to the chair. Oh, and get my smelling sauce. It's in the, in the drawer there. All right. Back up. Turn around. Never trust a woman. If you want to see Frank, he's downstairs. Why not take a look at him? Your friend Lobo's down there, too. Lobo. So he didn't run away and go bad. You took him. Since I worked on him, he's really friendly. <laughs> Don't you remember me? Lobo, what have they done to you, fella? Here, boy, here. Come on, Tommy. Come on, Lobo. Come on. Get up, fella. At least now it's three against three. Watch him now. Looks like they're losing their nerve. Let's get him before they get us. Come on, get him. snooping around outside. I'll take care of her. In the meantime, we'll have to act quickly. Quicker than you think. Doc Bullfinch and the sons of the pioneers jumped us when I was paying off in the stable, and I think they got everybody. Well, then there's only one thing to do. The rest of the money is in my post office box. Here's the combination. Hurry in town and get it. I'll meet you at the cabin. I don't know whether it's any news to you or not, but Roger's the one has been causing all the trouble around here. He never left the service. That was all a fake. He's being taken care of. What about the dogs? That's what I mean. Rogers catches, Vic. 
Then I'll be all alone. Somebody's going to pay for this. So you were in on it. Making a fool of all of us. Playing up to Frank. So Rogers didn't resign. It was all a trick. Well, there's no trick in this. isn't taking this time, Lobo. to get in there, somebody's going to get hurt. Catch you, Roy. You've been keeping me busy in a bird dog since you got here. That's it. Put those flames out. Close, huh? Just a flesh wound. 
Uh-oh. Still smoking. <laughs> 